Greetings Church family, this is Pastor Chance. I just want to share a brief message with you. For the month of August, our church is committing itself to corporate and united prayer. We believe that God is doing something among us and God wants to take this church to the next level. But it has to come with intentionality. It has to come with focus and dedication. So we are asking you for just this month at least that you would set aside the time and that you will join us together to pray that God's Holy Spirit will be poured out in abundance among us. We are asking you. Now we know that you can pray on your own but there is something that is not accomplished by individual prayer that can only be accomplished when two or three are gathered together. God promises that when his people come together, he will do great and mighty things. Listen, throughout the Bible, whenever a problem or situation arose in God's people, guess what they did? They came together and they prayed, and you know the answers. God has blessed, God has poured out. The prophet Joel says in Joel chapter 2 that we should sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. And when we do that, we can expect that God's spirit will be poured out. Also, we are looking at, uh, we just read and studied about Jonah and Nineveh. When Jonah preached to this city, this city got together from the greatest to the least. Even the animals were fasting. So if the animals were fasting, what about us? But God looked upon what those people did. He saw the sincerity of their heart and God moved and answered the prayer. Now, if God can answer the prayer of those wicked, evil people, then I'm certain that he can answer our prayers because James 5 tells us that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. God's people, when we pray, it produces results. So I'm asking you this month, would you come out on Wednesday night so we can study about prayer and the Holy Spirit? Would you come out and just join with others who are praying? We are praying for our community. We are praying for our church. We are praying for a genuine revival because we are told that a revival of true godliness is among our greatest need. And this should be our first work. So this is our priority that we are given. We are given emphasis to prayer because we know there's not the prayer itself doesn't have the power. Power. But what has power is when God's people pray, God intervenes and God changes our hearts when we pray. We need God to give us compassion for the lost. We need God to fill us with love for one another. Only he can do it. I'm asking also those who are able on Sabbath mornings to come out a little earlier and to be able to gather for prayer. Pray for the seeds to be filled. Pray for the Sabbath school to be enriched. Pray that when people hear the message, their hearts will be touched. I think that if we start doing those things, we can see a clear change and contrast taking place in our church. We're not asking for money. We are simply asking that you will commit to this month to seriously pray and seek God's face. The, the face. the prophet Jeremiah says, listen, seek me and search for me. When you do that, God says that he will be found of us. And not only that, but he will show us great and mighty things which we do not know. So I'm asking our church, especially our officers too, to please plead with God every day to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to baptize you every day with the Holy Spirit. Ask Him to just empower you to be able to do the things that He has asked us to do. I love this church. This church has been in existence for 92 years. That is a legacy. 92 years of making a difference in this community. This church is an emblem of hope. This church is a beacon of light. And we are the ones in this generation to be able to continue the legacy that this church was built upon. Do you think the founders of this church would want to come and see the church in the condition it is in today? Do you think that this church was started so that the church can be empty today? 92 years of rich legacy, brothers and sisters. We have to continue being people who will transform our communities, our homes, and our church. Our young people are looking at us. 
they are the ones that has to carry the torch and you and I we need to set the example and we need to empower them and they need to see what God can do in their day it reminds me of Joshua's generation in Joshua 24 Joshua charged the people to serve God and to be faithful to him and it says the elders who outlived Joshua they served him but when you came to Judges chapter 1 and 2 we saw a clear contrast taking place we saw that there has been a miscarriage of the message between the elders who outlived Joshua and this new generation that arose and sadly the Bible says in Judges 2 that there arose a generation who did not know God not even the works of God and this is what is taking place if we don't come together now to seek God's face and seek for a revival our children will grow up not wanting to even be in church because they saw us laxing and they saw us not loving church our children will grow up not knowing the power and the might of God because we failed to pray and seek God as never before and so I believe that this is an opportunity this is a moment that the church can shine when we come together to pray and seek our God he is our God and he promises that when you call unto me I will answer you I will be found of you and only God can turn around this church only God can make a difference and so I'm asking you brothers and sisters will you please for this month get seriously and intentionally about serving God please do it please do it this is the right moment with all that's going on in our nation today this is the moment for the church to arise listen whenever the world gets dark it is the best time for the church to shine because light shines brightest in darkness so when the nation among us are acting up when this country is going out of hand and moral degeneracy is just going down and down and down this is the time for God's people to arise out of slumber this is the time for God's people to take hold of the arms of God brothers and sisters let's not let go of God's arm too soon let us keep pressing our petitions let us be like Jacob who said listen I am going to hold on to you until you bless me and I'm not letting you go except you bless me we need that type of prayer we're not asking for the prayer that is just blessing our food and asking God to just do good things upon us give us safe traveling mercy that's not the kind of prayer we are asking about those are okay you can continue praying those but what we are asking here is this when you hear about prayer in the Bible it said they cried unto the Lord they called upon him it's not the, the Lord just give me or bless me it, that's not the type that's not the picture I get what I get when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord they were in tears they weep and they 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 they, they confess their sins they cover themselves in sackcloth and ashes we don't have to do all of that it's not like God does not want to answer our prayers but he wants to know our hearts and he wants us to know our own hearts because our hearts are deceitful brothers let us repent let us confess let us make things right with each other listen don't you want to see what God can do in our midst today listen if we would just do what God requires simply confess our sins truly repent and let go everything that defiles let go everything that is ungodly let go all those things that are separating you from God we have been charged and energized from the recent general conference where our president charged us to focus exclusively on the mission and the purpose of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Let us come together and pray and witness what God will do in the coming weeks and months. God bless you.